So now let's suppose we want to change some of the properties of our extension that we assigned when we first created it. So a property such as the extension's menu name inside of InDesign. Well, to do that, we need to edit the CSXS manifest file of the extension. And all that file is, is a XML-based description of various properties of the extension. And it's used by CS5 to determine various aspects of the extension's behavior and its appearance. And rather than editing the underlying XML file, which looks like this, Extension Builder provides a nice GUI abstraction for editing the, uh, all the different aspects of the file. So in this first view, the bundle view, I'm able to change things like the, uh, the bundle ID and the version number, as you'd expect. And just like in the new project wizard, if I enter an invalid value in any of these fields, I'm informed of the, uh, of the invalidity of it. And that's really useful because if I had just left that invalid value there, there's every chance that my extension wouldn't load properly and the problem would be quite difficult to diagnose. So that saves us a lot of time. Say I also want to uh, target a different application, so I also want this extension to run in Illustrator. I can check this checkbox here, and that will add Illustrator to my manifest. So I click Save there. Now, if I go to the manifest XML again, you can see Illustrator has been added to it. So what other things can I edit? Well, I can make changes such as the um, extensions menu name, as I said before, uh, default width and height, maximum width and height. Also, I'm able to select icon files and a whole host of other things. And you'll notice that I'm actually able to apply all of these settings to individual hosts rather than every host. So that gives me really fine grained control over the appearance of my extension. If I right click the extension now and go to properties and I look at the flex build path provided by Flash Builder, you can see that not only did Extension Builder add Illustrator to the manifest file for me, but it's also gone and added the Illustrator Seesaw library. So I can go ahead straight away and start writing action script code that targets the Illustrator scripting DOM as well. So that's really useful. And in fact, if I go and click CS Extension Builder Libraries, I'm able to add a whole host of libraries to my application's uh, flex build path with just one click of a checkbox. So I'm presented with this list of all the different Seesaw libraries that are provided with the CS SDK. But also, with Extension Builder, we get a whole load of extra libraries. And I'll just quickly show you what these are now. So first of all, we have the host adapter libraries. And these enable deeper integration with host applications than is currently possible uh, through Seesaw library. At the moment, uh, they basically allow you to add listeners for application native application events in ActionScript. I also get the Cairngorm framework for architecting uh, ActionScript applications. I get the Adobe Web Services Infrastructure Library, which allows me to make HTTP requests and handle responses through a very simple interface. And I also get this Adobe XMP Metadata Library. So just for sake of example, let's check that box there and hit OK. And that dialog closes. And now say I open up my source file as before. Let's just start typing XMP and get the autocomplete on that. And you can see instantly the library is available for me to use within my source. OK, so if we step away from pro programming briefly, another way that Extension Builder helps us out is with our UI. So you saw before, the UI for our panel is basically this very plain uh, button. And it looks very flexy at the moment. But if I go back into the properties of my panel and go to Flex Themes, 
One of the features of Flash Builder 4 is the ability to set a flex theme for your project. And the theme is basically just a set of skins that change the overall appearance of your application. And sure enough, with Creative Suite Extension Builder, we get our own CS5 theme that we can apply to our project. And now, I go back to InDesign and run the extension again. Our panel opens up and you can see that the new CS5 theme has been applied to the, uh, the extension. So that's great. And let's jump back to Flash Builder for now. Alright, so let's suppose now that my extension is complete and I'm ready to export it. Well, we can do this by right clicking the extension and going to export. Adobe Creative Suite Extension Builder, Creative Suite Extension. I click Next, and all I need to do here is provide Extension Builder with a certificate that I want to sign my application with. So let's just create one quickly. And quick as a flash, I can click Finish. And all Extension Builder does now is it builds a ZXP installer for my extension. And that's the installer that you can use to install the extension through the Extension Manager. And from then, it will be able to be run in InDesign and Illustrator. So the last thing I'll show you in this video is the, the various support materials that are provided with Extension Builder to help you get to grips with the CS SDK and Extension Builder itself. Um, so I've already shown you how you can see documentation in line while you're coding. If I go to Help, I'll go to Eclipse Help, you'll see that there's this Adobe Creative Suite SDK section in the Help. And in there, you have a load of getting started guides for when you're just starting out. and then the Programmer's Guide, which tells you how to use all the different features of Extension Builder. And after that, you have some product-specific guides. So that's guides about the scripting DOMs of each uh, individual CS application. And finally, we have the uh, API references for all the libraries that are included with Extension Builder. And they look just like you'd expect normal AS documentation to look. OK, so if that's not enough, you can uh, also access a whole load of cookbooks from within the IDE itself. So say I'm interested in one of these cookbooks on this menu here, I can just click on the title of the cookbook and Eclipse launches a web browser for me. And inside that, I can read the cookbook without actually having to leave the IDE. And finally, if I want to see some sample code, I can use the remote sample importer tool. And I go to File, Import, Other, Remote Creative Suite SDK examples. And here I'm presented with a list of sample extensions that are hosted by Adobe. And you'll see that when I click a particular sample, I get a description of the sample in this window beneath. So let's just select one for the sake of example. Click Finish. And what happens then is the sample is downloaded into my workspace and I can view the source and run it as if it were my own extension. So those are all the features of Extension Builder that I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, hopefully you've seen how easily Extension Builder lets you create and configure and debug 
extensions and package them. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. Stop debugging that instance of the application and go to attach as Adobe InDesign extension again. You'll see that the debugger connects and without having to restart InDesign, my panel opens up, my breakpoint gets hit as before. Let's remove that and just hit continue. And you'll see that the text stream is created at a different place in the document. So that demonstrates how easy it is to make changes inside Flash Builder 4, inside Extension Builder, and to run those changes inside of the host application uh, in really a very short space of time.